Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. I've been really looking forward to recording today's video because I get so many questions about the silly words and terms that we use as crocheters. If you've ever watched a crochet podcast or you've gone to a yarny meetup, you've probably heard people saying words and you're like, what the heck does that even mean? With so many new friends coming to crochet, it's about time we have one place we can go to find the meaning of the most commonly used terms in our crochet world. So in this video, I am going through 20 of the most used crochet acronyms lingo and terms that you should know. And before we get into our list, of course we have to give some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. It's been a little dreary, it's been a little gross, so it was a peppermint tea kind of day. The farmer's markets are open though, so everybody's coming out with their honeys, and I finally got some local orange honey. Woo! It's my favorite part of spring, I swear. Okay, so today's cup of caffeine sponsor is Miss Ashley. And when donating, Ashley said, I crocheted one summer as a child and just returned to it a couple of weeks ago. I have watched so many of your videos and must thank you immensely. Your serene, playful energy brightens my day and using my new skills from your videos to make my patterns improves my life. Ashley. I mean, flattery will get you everywhere, so thank you very much. <laughs> I'm so excited that you and many others are returning to crochet after a long time away, and I hope this video helps you get more comfortable, not only with your stitching, but also with the general culture of being a crocheter. So welcome to the fold, my darling. Now let's talk terms, and first one out of the gate is frog. Now you'll hear the term frog when someone is talking about ripping out their project, because if you think about a frog, they make the sound ribbit, and if you think about ripping out your crochet stitches, rip it, rip it, rip it, kind of sounds like rib it, rib it, rib it. It's a stretch, I know, but we own it. So essentially, frogging is ripping out your stitches from your crochet project. Next on the list is swatch. So swatch is a noun as well as a verb. On the noun side, a swatch is a square or rectangular piece of fabric that you typically make in preparation for your upcoming project. Typically, we swatch for a few different reasons. It can be to try out a different stitch pattern, to see what a particular yarn looks like when it's worked up and oftentimes you'll make a swatch ahead of a project to match your attention with the tension mentioned in the pattern. Designers will always encourage you to make a swatch to make sure that you're using the right amount of yarn in your project and also make sure your project turns out with similar dimensions as the original pattern. Now some of us will go rogue, myself included. I don't always swatch but you're really taking a gamble when you choose to do that because you might go over on your yarn or especially if you're making a wearable the dimensions can be off and you can end up with an oversized blanket as opposed to a cardigan. Skip swatching at your own risk. That's all I'm gonna say. Next, let's talk about the term dye lot. When yarn is commercially dyed, it's dyed in lots. So those are large batches of yarn that are dyed at the same time. And typically an individual ball from that lot will match any other ball in that same lot. But this is what you need to know, right? So if you get a ball from two different lots, they're technically the same color, but they might be a different shade. Yarn is dyed with chemicals. And when chemicals are mixed in different ways or heat, or water come into the equation, the color of the skein of yarn that's produced is gonna vary slightly. So when you're sourcing yarn, especially at a yarn store, make sure you're looking for yarns within the same lot because it's more likely that they're gonna be exactly the same color. Now, while we're on the subject of yarn, let's talk about the term ply. So a ply is a single strand of yarn. When you're purchasing yarn, it's going to have either a single or multiple plies. A single ply yarn is often called roving yarn. Most commercial yarns have multiple plies, sometimes two, sometimes four, up to 12 or even 15. The more plies you have, the more stitch definition you're going to have as well. And you might often find plies that are created by plying two yarns together, then plying two sets of those two yarns together. These yarn manufacturers get very, very creative and it gives us lots of really great options. Now, plies can also relate to a yarn weight, so how thick or thin the yarn is. If you need to know more about that, I have a link down below to a chart that talks more about yarn weights and the conversions. As you spend more time with yarns, especially if you spend any time in local yarn stores, you'll get to know a yarn swift and a yarn winder. When purchasing yarn, you might find it in a put up like this, which is called a twisted hank. Sometimes it's called a skein. Don't worry, we're gonna get to that a little bit later in the video. But this twisted hank is not actually usable straight out of the package. If you try to use this, it will tangle. And if you've done that before, I am so sorry. I am sorry you are just getting to this video, but please do not try to use this straight from the hank. What you need to do is grab a swift. This is called an umbrella swift because when you open it, it's kind of like an umbrella. You'll attach this to a table, take the yarn, untwist it, and put it on the swift. Open up the umbrella, secure it, and then you're going to take your yarn ball winder and you're gonna get the yarn from here 
onto here by twisting this. And once you finish that process, you have taken the yarn from a twisted hank into a usable cake. Another term you might not be familiar with is this term notions. So within crochet, of course, we have our tools, which are our crochet hooks, but we also have a series of notions, which are other tools that help us accomplish the craft of crochet. And those notions can be anything from scissors to tapestry needles, stitch markers, gauge rulers, any kind of hardware that you can think of that you use within crochet that isn't an actual crochet hook could be classified as a notion. Let's get into some of the more fun and silly terms. The first one is going to be crojo. So this is one of the first terms that I found out about and I was like this is just the silliest weirdest term but crojo is actually a very serious thing. It's your crocheting mojo. It's the energy that you have to put into your crochet projects. Many of us have natural crojo. It can be inspired by yarn or new tools or just being around your crafty friends but occasionally life gets in the way and it might take your crojo down a peg. Maybe you can't get into that latest project or the yarn is just not hitting like it used to and your crojo is like on level zero and we got to get it back up to a 10. Some easy ways to get your crojo back are to spend time around your crafty friends. We can often be inspired by others. Find a crafty friend on YouTube. I don't know, binge some of my videos. That might get your crojo up. And you can also get your crojo back by starting a new project. It could be that your crojo is down because you're working on something that you've lost the spark and the energy for. I often like to have a big project like a blanket and also smaller projects like washcloths or baskets to work on in between some of my other projects to keep my spirits up. The next term I want to talk about is yarn barf. Now, even if you've never heard this term before, I'm sure you've experienced this. Yarn barf is that big clump of yarn that comes out when you're looking for the center pull on a skein or a ball of yarn. While it's not the end of the world, it is terribly frustrating and super annoying to spend 10, 15, sometimes 30 minutes untangling that bit of yarn barf before you can start your actual project. Now, if you're anything like me, you can weigh your options and decide if it makes more sense to untangle the yarn, maybe if it's a nice bit of hand dyed, very expensive yarn, or just cut that piece and toss it if it's a yarn that's more commercial and easy to find. If you want to avoid yarn barf altogether, my recommendation is to cake your yarn using a yarn ball winder and start from the outside of the skein. A term very closely related to yarn barf is yarn chicken. So this is a term for all of my rebels out there. Let's say you're working on a project and you're just a couple rows from the end and you notice you're getting dangerously close to the end of your ball of yarn, but you're feeling very, very confident. So you keep stitching along that is called yarn chicken because you're not exactly sure if you're gonna make it to the end of your project with the small amount of yarn that you have left. I always think it's a fun game to see if I'm going to win yarn chicken, but I am always risk averse. So I have an extra ball of yarn for every single project that I work on. If you like the thrill, go ahead and test your yarn chicken skills. And if you get to the very end of your project and maybe you're just a couple stitches short, rip out some of those stitches and use either a smaller hook or a shorter stitch for that last row and that should get you through the little bit of yarn that you have left. Here are a couple more terms that you might have heard, a cow and a mal. So a cow, C-A-L, is a crochet along. This is an event where makers from all over the world or a small community work on a similar project or a similar theme at the same time. I've run lots of crochet alongs, either project focused or just generally event focused. It's a really great way to build community, make new friends, and also start and finish projects that you've had sitting for a really long time. A mal is worked in the same spirit, but it's called a make along instead of specifically a crochet along. This is an opportunity to be more inclusive, maybe pulling in makers from other disciplines. Often you'll see a mal including crochet components as well as knit components. If you're looking for a make along type project, I encourage you to join us for hashtag yarn love, which is a make along and photo challenge that starts June 1st. I've linked that down in the description if you want to join us. I've got a couple more terms that I've grouped together. This first group are acronyms for the state of our project. The first term is going to be H-O-T-H, -H, which stands for hot off the hook. That means a project that you just finished. Maybe you haven't weaved in the ends, you haven't blocked it yet, but you're done with your stitching. So that's considered hot off the hook. Another term is WIP, which stands for work in progress. So that's a project that you are actively working on, but you're not quite finished with. So if you have a whip, you likely also have a UFO, which stands for unfinished object. Typically an unfinished object is something that you haven't finished, but maybe you're not actively working on it. Those might be projects that you put on ice for a little while. Maybe you're waiting for more yarn or you need to put it on the back burner while you work on other things. And the last term in this group is FO or finished object. That is something that is 100% complete. You're done with your stitching, you weaved in your ends, you've blocked it, and now it's ready to wear or to use. 
use. So those are FOs or finished objects. And our last group of terms are yarn put-ups. So these are the format of yarns typically for sale. Manufacturers have the option of presenting their yarns in different ways when they're ready for sale. Usually that decision has to do with how well the yarn presents itself in different formats and also how expensive it is to put yarn in those different formats. So I've got four different ways you're going to see your yarn and the terms that go with them. So the first option here is called a hank. This specifically is a twisted hank. This bit of yarn is not usable straight out of the hank. You'll need to wind it using a yarn ball winder and swift. After using a yarn ball winder and swift, this hank will become a cake. So a cake looks just like this. You'll have your center pull right here and then the yarn is wrapped around it. It looks like a little bit of cake or like a little biscuit or something like that. So that's why it's called a cake. When you go to the store, you're often going to see yarn that looks like this. This is actually called a bullet skein or just a skein. Oftentimes you're going to hear this called a skein. It's not really a skein, but we call it a skein, but it's not really a skein. Okay, and let's talk about the pronunciation. I've heard skein, I've heard skein, it's actually skein. And if you think about it, it's no skein, no gain. That's how you pronounce skein. When you go to the store, you might also see yarn that looks like this. This is called a ball or more specifically a donut ball. Cause it kind of looks like a donut. If you open it up, you've got a little hole here in the center and you can get a center pull out of this. Typically when I find yarns as a ball like this, I will still skein them up with a yarn ball winder and turn them into cake. It makes them a little bit more compact and you won't have to worry about so much yarn bar. Alrighty, my friends, those are just 20 of the terms that we as crocheters use. I know that you know a whole lot more than that. So make sure you sound off in the comments with any terms that I've missed as well as their definitions so we can all learn from each other. If you learned anything in today's video, make sure you hit that like button and please consider subscribing to my channel. Honestly, if you've watched more than three of my videos today, you really should be subscribed. It's that easy. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see you next time time.